Hello, welcome to the Inequality Principle. This is Mike Sai. First off, let me start off by congratulating the Minnesota Timberwolves. I had Kellen Jaw dead for a little bit there. I thought it was possible you could force a game seven. I didn't know it was going to be a complete blowout. That was a slaughter. It actually made me a conspiracy theorist for a second. I've never seen that many missed shots and that many made shots in an NBA game my entire life. It was like there was magnets on the ball and they had a bigger hoop. You ever see, uh, I, forget the, I forget the movie's name. I think it's Six Man and Marlon Wayans uh, had that or uh, the other one. I don't know which one it was. I think it was Marlon Wayans. His brother died when they are in college and he had that ghost that was playing for him and will knock the opponent's ball away and will push people and stuff. It, it was like giving me six man vibes, whatever was happening there. Like there was a ghost playing both sides of the court and not allowing um their team to score. It was very strange things going on, but that's all credit to Minnesota and their game plan, their switch on Carl Anthony Towns to Jokic and them doubling him all game and forcing uh, the rest of the players, the role players on Denver to step up and make a play. And Rudy Gobert showed why he is defensive MVP by guarding pretty much every single person besides Jokic to an elite level. They had no spacing. Everybody was hungry, starving rabbit lions or Timberwolves per se. And they couldn't get anything going at all. This was a, this was, this just went from the most dominant single person performance I've seen to the most dominant team performance I've seen back to back. This series is crazy. This series is crazy, but I have a prediction. I have a prediction for game seven and it may surprise you. Game seven in Denver. My prediction is. Denver is going to win. This is why. Jokic has seen their game play. Mike Malone has seen their game plan. And the game plan is very simple. It's this. Everybody on their team will allow to beat us. All right. But we won't allow Jokic to beat us. We will double him. We will triple team him. And we will pressure so much that he has to force to get the ball out of his hands. And if his team is not on, then they lose. But Jokic won't beat us by himself. He won't drop 40. He might have 20 assists, but he won't drop 40. And guess what? We're getting every rebound. Every rebound. There's going to be no uncontested rebounds. We'll out-rebound them. Because they understand if Jokic is not on the court, they can't score. So if we pressure him nonstop, force him to make tough decisions, and his team is not hot, they're going to win. In order to adapt to this, you're going to have to make Jamal Murray come out of his shell, stop playing scared, and take over the game and get hot early so they cannot double, triple team Jokic. If Jamal Murray is knocking down shots consistently and he's going 50% 50% from the field, it frees up Jokic to the point where if they try to double you, dump it to Jamal Murray, he can hit the shot from the rim. He can hit the shot from the three. That frees up Michael Porter Jr. He can hit the shot from the three. Both of them have been having some of the worst games I've seen them have in playoff history. Some of the worst series they've ever had. They need to search their souls, find out what they're playing for, and show up game seven and perform to the the ability that we all know they can perform, right? Because if they don't, and Jokic is the only person who can produce anything on their offense and everybody else is hitting bricks, you know, everybody's hitting bricks and they can focus all their intents and all their powers on him, it's going to be another long day. And nobody wants to see another 45-point blowout. That's an embarrassment. That's a spanking. They were sitting there fuming. They heard all the news media talking about them, calling them suck. 
saying they are horrible and they're not the number one defense and whoever. They heard it all the same way the Nuggets heard it all. They both responded to pressure appropriately to the amount of disrespect they were receiving. This is one of the best series ever, and it comes to a conclusion very soon, Game 7. I'm calling in for the Nuggets to adapt and to make the correct changes and take this ass whooping because it was brutal. It was brutal. I didn't want to stay and watch it. It was brutal, man. And take this ass whooping and come back Game 7 with a new plan, a clear mind. Understand, if you lose by one, if you lose by 45, it still counts as one loss. So don't dwell on how well you received it. Just dwell on how much you want payback, how much you want to stop the silence. The silence, the haters, how much you want to protect your home court, how much you want to prove to the NBA that you guys are the one seed, not OKC, not the Wolves, not any other team that's trying to put up there, but you guys are the one seed. You're the best team in the league, and you plan to build a dynasty. You need to prove it. Game seven. That's where champions are made. This moment has come to LeBron many times, and this is where Jokic proves that he's the GOAT. He must win game seven. This is his moment. This is going to be a hard series, and it all comes down to this. All right, it's the inequality principle. Catch y'all next time.